Hello guys, welcome to our channel. My name is Balram Prasad and I am working with Microsoft as a senior software engineer. In today's demo, we are going to talk about debugging into Azure Data Factory. How we can debug the pipeline, how we can set debug point, and how we can enable debug for data flow activities. So that is what we are going to see into this demo. Let's go to Azure portal. So for this demo, we are in Azure portal and we have ADF and storage created. Let's launch the studio. So once the data factory homepage comes, let's go into edit tab, author tab, and then let's create one pipeline for this demo. Let's see how we can use the debug session. So let me put the debug demo. And in this demo, let's see that when if suppose we have to wait activity, just simple wait activity, right? And uh, it is going to wait five seconds. And second is I can go and I can go and put the second wait activity also, and I can join that. Okay, both should be running. Now let's see that suppose five here also. Now, if I go ahead, there are two ways to, uh, to do checking that when this, uh, this pipeline is running. Either I can go and say the trigger now, and then pipeline is not fine because we have to publish first. But I do not want to publish that one. I want to test that one before doing any publish activity. Then we have an option called debug here. And if I will debug right now, and it will run both activity uh, without uh, deploying, and it will show the output into this output window. And we can refresh and see that both activity is succeeded. We can go ahead and see what is the input and other details. Depending upon uh, activity, the output will be coming. Output and input will be coming. We can see more details. And now suppose I have three activity, right? I have three activity, but I want to run only two. So I can go ahead and select this activity and there is a little red arrow. I can click that one debug until third activity will be this grayed out or whatever activity after that one it will grayed out and we can click on debug and play start running that activity, that two activity so that we can see the output in other details. Only two activity has been done, third is skipped. So right now if you see only debug option is there. And if we are going to use data flow, then, then if we create the data flow, then let's click on source. Let me create one source quickly. And uh, let me create a, uh, let me create one new source for Gen2. And let's put this uh, demoted test. Let's use one new connection. OK. And let me browse uh, the paths from this folder. So there is some data inside this path and I can browse more. Uh, let's see. This is, if there is some data inside this one. So this is proper file path is coming. So this is our sync. Suppose we, we have source and now we want to do the sync. So let's see the sync part also. Let me add that sync quickly and sync let me add the data set which is the new one let me create one more time the different one and let's see some second one is there so i can go with that okay and i can bring browse the path let's see keep it here snaps one Okay, so this is what a data flow activity looks like. We will go in detail more on data flow activity later. But if you see, if you want to preview the data here, if we want to test this one without doing publish, then you can go into data flow and if you select anything data preview, but you have to enable the debug mode for that one. So if we enable the debug mode, it will say that which runtime you want to use for this one and then how much time you want to enable for debugging. So let's keep that one hour and it will enable, uh, it will ready the cluster, whatever cluster is there. And it will give us option to see the data preview be before deploying anything, before publishing. And we can see the details from here that what is happening. And we can go and see the data. If any data is there in that file, it will fetch the data. It will go and see that what is happening. 
but when we do testing whatever source in sync and whatever folder or anything we use it will connect to real one so before uh, uh, publishing we might need to use the test folders and other things and later we have to change that one like uh, whenever we were doing into dev environment prod environment so that is how we have to separate it here also so that's what we have to do and uh, till the time it is running we can go and see that what settings we can put so data flow we can so source data limit is that thousand we can bring not more than that one so it is bringing two row we can see it here we can export it we can do different thing based on uh, debugging and experience and we can we can add more activity based on looking into data looking into columns we can see the details and now let's see that if in this setting if you see that i missed to mark that one that hey last name first name is the first row is column i can go back and see that let me open my data set and let me mark that one this is the first row will be called first row will be header that is how we do right and let me go back one more time and if i go back and then let's run this one once again i want to preview that one because i have made some changes over there i can go back and i can refresh that and it should be taking that whatever changes i made so now if you see it is taking it is taking three more columns and there are three columns are coming we have to see that why three columns are coming in the data what is the different issue in the data we can go ahead and see and fix that one so that is what we uh, generally do while we debugging now suppose we have a data uh, this uh, data flow and let's put this data flow into our pipeline right and then we can put it into pipeline and let's see that okay let's run that one let me disable that debug until now if you see this one is here now if you closely watch that one there are more options here so we can use the data flow debug session it here or we can use whatever activity um, uh, runtime IR we have given. So it happens that when we click from debug from debug session it will generate it will give us a a small cluster it will not give us the original cluster what is defined in our compute so that will not give us so generally we used to do debug from that activity first then debug from pipeline here with a small cluster and then whatever runtime we have decided that it will de depending upon cluster size we have provided we can go and test that one so that is also what we can go and do that one so right now let's go and see that this row and let's debug into debug session now if you see we have not published anything still right now we are in development mode we are doing all this activity we are running if we click on that one we can go more details what is happening inside this data flow and we can see all the details and in given very quickly to us a cluster and a cluster was warm because this is debug so it is leveraging some shared and warm cluster so that that's what is the benefit of that and if we go and see that all this data is coming we can see all the details we can go and see that what happened after copying total column six came to row calculated all we can see the debug and we can go ahead that one if we do not want to go ahead and do that way then test with actual ir which we are going to do then whatever activity runtime we have set up with each activity that will go ahead and kick in and now we can see that it, it here that it is now running one more time and we can see so right now it is in queue it will get that acquiring the compute it will take the compute it will take more than time than that one but it will be real kind of scenario because we know that our integration run time is uh, defined as a four four node or six node whatever system is there actual that system will be kicked in actual that configuration and then we will see that how fast is working or not our whatever activity we have taken or whatever transformation we are doing that we will see we can see that and we will take a judgment based on we can optimize our code or, or optimize integration runtime we definitely can do that one also now we can see that it is running right now it acquired compute and it is running so that is it will take some more time to run that one and it will be succeeded and running the actual spinning of the actual compute it takes time that is why we generally use that activity one 
and then see that one because it gives a light cluster over there which is warm it does not take so much time to generate this cluster require all the compute and other things right now if you see the sync has been succeeded root row 2 is retained we can see that all the stages from here and details transformation stages we can see here also it says that succeeded so all we can go and see the details so that is how we debug activity we debug pipeline we debug data flow and see without publishing and if we want to trigger that one right now if suppose we wanted to test other way then we if we click on the trigger we see that pipeline publish first and we with the publish that one it is kind of actual right so before doing that publish we want to test that is how we can use the debug for that thank you